Jed McKay's Moon Knight is a perfect place to jump into Moon Knight in comic book form, either as a completely fresh new reader, or for anyone who enjoyed the Disney Plus TV show and wants to see more of Mark Spector. And if you didn't enjoy the show, this book is still well worth a read because the differences in style, pace and tone make it much less of a slow burn and much more of an interesting, fast-paced action story without leaving behind the intricacies of Mark Spector's fractured psyche. This time on Boxes and Bubbles, we'll take a look at Moon Knight number 13 from Marvel. Moon Knight issue 13 is written by Jed McKay, with art by Federico Sabatini, colours by Rachelle Rosenberg, and letters by VCs Corey Petit. By starting with issue 13, we're jumping in a year into the run at this point, but I've wanted to talk about this series once or twice before. This was my first Moon Knight book, and it started just a bit before the Disney Plus show began airing. There are quite a few differences between this and the TV show when it comes to what Mark's been up to and the presences of his alter egos. But the TV show and this run work together nicely. You can read this perfectly fine without having seen it, but if you did watch the show, you'll have more knowledge of the character and know about some things that happened previously in his life. This story is set later, when Mark has settled down and opened up his Midnight Mission, his headquarters if you like, from which he carries out the mission of the Fist of Conchu to protect those who travel by night. Quick sidebar, how he came about the location for the new Midnight Mission in issue 9 was one of the oddest and coolest issues of this series so far. Just a really neat idea which I hope comes up again in the story later. Before now, Mark's had some trouble with other followers of Conchu, a jealous murderer, and once in the past, and now again most recently, has been tangled up with vampires who are running a kind of vampiric pyramid scheme, turning unwilling victims, one of whom now works as Mark's receptionist. The reason issue 13 was particularly enjoyable for me requires a bit of knowledge of a different character, Taskmaster. To talk about why goes into pretty light spoiler territory, so while there aren't any big shocking twists for me to spoil this issue, if you really don't want to know anything about what's waiting for you in the book, maybe stop here. Alright, since we're talking about the MCU as well in this video, let's take a look at poor Taskmaster in the Black Widow movie. I'm far from the type to complain if a character's screen counterpart doesn't follow the comic book in every detail, but Taskmaster's new incarnation in the MCU just felt… like a shame. In comic book form, Taskmaster is a chaotic neutral character, that is, someone who'll do anything for the right price, with no particular moral alignment, though he has no qualms about being a vicious killer. He's a really fun bad guy, and is usually very flippant and a touch comedic, he has a ridiculous costume with a cape and a fully head covering skull mask. Look at this! It's so silly, it's awesome! Having Taskmaster not be the fun character that he is in the comics, and instead being quite a quiet, austere character was a disappointment for me, along with a new costume which, well I suppose is a touch more, to use an incredibly elastic term when it comes to superheroes and comics, realistic. It looks like a cross between a Destiny Guardian and a Snowboarder. I mean, you let old pinball head himself, Mysterio, keep his get up. Why not Taskmaster? Well, no worries, because we're dealing with the version of Taskmaster that I prefer in this book, and Jet McKay does an excellent job with his character here. The dialogue between him and the tutor is great. It's mostly serious, with a little humor sprinkled in. Right here at the start of the book, the tutor is asking Taskmaster for information. He wants to know what Taskmaster knows about Moon Knight, and Taskmaster replies, short answer, don't which leads us into this page of Moon Knight interrogating some vampires. So far in the book he's been a fighter, but we haven't really seen him being sadistic. Taskmaster's dialogue with the tutor is a really smart framing device to introduce a facet of Moon Knight we haven't seen so far this run. He can be a very nasty man. He wants information about the tutor, so he's captured and tied up a bunch of vampires in the shadow of a building. As the sun rises and the shadow shifts, one by one they'll be exposed to sunlight, until they tell him what he wants to know. When one of them tells him that they're not going to talk, he kicks him right out into the light to burn up. The tutor says, but he's just a man, is he not? Just a man, says Taskmaster, visibly displeased. And for very good reason, as we new readers will find out later, and those of you who already know, know too well. You want to know what Moon Knight is? This is Moon Knight, he says, holding up a bullet. He explains how completely ruthless Moon Knight is, juxtaposed wonderfully with these images of him saving the human victims those vampires had been keeping prisoner. After that, we see him in full costume consulting his psychiatrist to deal with some of the events of previous issues, running counter to what Taskmaster is saying about his senseless and violent nature. 
What I liked most about the use of Taskmaster here, besides the really great characterization, is that he's doing something we never see him do. He refuses a job. When the tutor asks him to kill Moon Knight, Taskmaster says no. Having read previous comics with Taskmaster, that alone made me realize how dangerous Moon Knight has the potential to be. It scares off even Taskmaster, who goes on to mention that he'd take on Spider-Man and even Cap, but Moon Knight has previously tried to kill him by crashing a helicopter into him. That's actually canon, as I found out, and not the most messed up thing that Moon Knight has tried to do to him in previous series. I don't blame the guy for not wanting to tangle with him again. After their meeting, Taskmaster catches up with Moon Knight, who now once again is doing something contradictory. He's indiscriminately slaughtering a bunch of vampire flunkies. Taskmaster lets him know that he was offered a very handsomely paid hit job on him, but he turned it down, and that whatever happens next isn't anything to do with him. Why are you telling me this? asks Moon Knight. Mainly because I'm scared as hell of you. From there we see the tutor's next move, but there's also a bit of a reveal here. And if you were keen-eyed, you might have already seen it coming already. Last issue, Stephen Grant made his first appearance in this run by stopping Mark from killing Zodiac. Yet this issue, Moon Knight has been torturing and killing vampires left and right. Taskmaster is terrified of his violent behaviour, yet we haven't really seen him do anything besides retaliate to attacks which were started by someone else. It doesn't add up. If you're totally new to Moon Knight, close the video now, since I think this has been written to be a twist reveal for you. But if you stuck around for the very end of Moon Knight on Disney+, Plus, or if you've read him before, you'll know who's about to show up. Did you figure it out? All the clues are there. This issue ends on Mark Spector calling a meeting between himself, Stephen Grant, and his third, much more violent alter ego, Jake Lockley. So that's it for the story in this issue, but I'd be remiss not to talk about how cool the art has been this entire run so far. While I have to say that it's a bit of a mixed bag, some panels look a bit funky to me, on the whole it's really cool. It's really a mixture of the colour and the art itself that makes this come alive so nicely. Moon Knight is always this iridescent, luminous white, which looks really cool, but it juxtaposes super nicely with the really heavy black shadows which are used quite often throughout the series. Besides that bright white, the colour palette is generally dark, which fits with the setting and tone of the book. Often there's a feeling of dirt or grain. This panel is a nice example. Those black shadowy lines look as if someone has used a paintbrush with quite a small amount of paint on to kind of flick across. And those black spots give everything just a little bit of a dirty feeling. Kind of gritty and grainy. Just like in a TV show, Moon Knight's suit always looks really cool. And it's always billowing out dramatically or swirling around him as he's fighting. It looks great, the story is a good place to jump in without any prior knowledge, though it still works well if you do know the character, and the vampiric pyramid scheme is a really interesting twist on vampires and kind of a turf war type situation. It's been consistently interesting, exciting, and using parts of established lore for Moon Knight in new and interesting ways. So all in all, a series I think is well worth a read by anybody who's interested in the character. So another super solid issue of a super solid series. But that's all for today! If you're interested in any other books that came out recently, have a look around the rest of the channel for some more spoiler-free reviews. And give me a follow at BoxesNBubbles on Twitter to hear about all the comic books that I read every week but don't have time to make videos about, is what I would usually say. But, as you might be able to tell, today I have my new camera! This thing is going to make it easier for me to record and I can also use the camera and the microphone at the same time. I kind of got a new setup going on in my place, so what I want to try and do Starting from maybe Tuesday this week is make a video roundup of all the comic books that I was able to read before Wednesday. Which means that every week I'll be able to tell you my favourite books that I have read so far that week. But if I release the video on Wednesday, there will be the comics from the previous week. Since I'm an amateur, I don't really get comics ahead of time. But it will still be fun to talk about all the stuff that I managed to read and I really enjoyed. There's a lot of times where I really did enjoy a book, but there was just something else that outshone it and I wanted to make a video talking about that. It's going to be nice to have the opportunity to really highlight the books that I really liked, but maybe don't have time to make a 7 minute deep dive about. So keep an eye out for that, hopefully that will be coming really soon. And while I'm on it, I might also start streaming some video games. I don't really have any illusions of being very popular or reaching a wide audience, but really mostly it's just for fun. I want to start by streaming one of my favourite video games of all time, Dragon Age Origins, and we'll see what happens from there. So that's all for now, but keep your eyes peeled, you'll see me again soon. Bye bye!